Uh, here in Germany, we have an understanding that we deal with existing structures and that we try to reuse already uh, build up areas uh, constantly. This is not only for economic reasons, but also to keep the existing environment, which includes many aspects, societal aspects, cultural aspects, as well as the built environment. Well, cultural heritage is important because uh, it is having a kind of an aura which goes around uh, its original site and also the attached areas and structures are affected by cultural heritage. And therefore, if we plan or replan an area, we always have to look for the heritage which is already there and try to figure out what the values are of this heritage. And in some cases, it's about proportions, it's about the size, but it could also be about uses and people who live already in this area. So it is a very complex process which has to be discussed in different circles in the administration, but also with the people who are affected. We are following international guidelines, um, the Venice Declaration from the post-war period and also recent declarations like the Davos Declaration that um, is a methodology to integrate urban development, architectural design and heritage um, aspects and we try to find out what can be specific solutions for uh, a big city like Berlin and for the different kind of neighborhoods we have. It's for us very important to create a bridge between these international standards and local acceptance and local involvement. On one hand we do have a heritage which is on a national level and it is protected buildings like a museum in which we are here now or in other cases churches and so on and so forth. And they are very important for the whole society because they identify the national identity and also the people would identify even if they come from another place. Mostly it's tourists coming here today, but there is no authentic life anymore, or very little. That's the breeding point of the project, the interest for uh, the city and uh, trying to activate the city for the future. Uh, Flussbad Berlin is a, a program, more or less, to activate the, the Spreekanal on the full length. Uh, so 1.8 kilometers of unused canal. What we try to do here is more or less a case study in order to make people think about the current condition of the, of the river and how we treat it. Have something that um, breeds appetite, bringing them into contact with clean water and suddenly understanding what a great thing that would be for the future of the city to have clean water in the river. One of the main aims of the project is to implement a function of everyday life and to offer something to people to come back to the city center. Also hier sind wir jetzt bei der Museumsinsel und freundlicherweise steht hier so ein kleiner Plan. Und vor uns ist direkt das Bode-Museum, dann die alte Nationalgalerie, das Pergamon-Museum, das alte Museum, das neue Museum. Und Sie merken, das ist keine singuläre Entwicklung eines einzelnen Museums, MoMA oder so, sondern das ist von vornherein ein Quartier gewesen, ein Museumsquartier. Die Könige haben das auch Quartier der Kunst, Kultur und Wissenschaften genannt. Und diese Wissensvermittlung, diese Wissensorte, sind unserer Ansicht nach öffentliche Räume.
After the reunification in Germany, in Berlin, this museum island has been developed as a part in the center of the city, not being the retail center, but having its own heritage in terms of we show the culture in which we developed on the continent in, in Europe. If visitors come to Berlin, they will visit this area and go into the different museums because here they are sure that they will see the most important cultural values which are on display in Berlin. And so uh, this has a power to uh, spread across the whole country. Well, I mean, in Hamburg, of course, we see a, di a different heritage, which is based on the harbor and the harbor environment. And by keeping these old brick buildings, the aesthetics and the atmosphere of the old harbor area is kept, even if there are completely new, new uh, users coming into this area. In Hamburg, the cultural heritage is very important because the city, it has a certain materiality, it has a certain atmosphere and also a certain height that is something that is really valued. And the historic identity is that Hamburg is a brick city. Um, what, what we see here, both the old buildings but also the new buildings, Hamburg it's made from bricks because in a delta if you are a delta city um, the, the bricks they are made from the clay because clay is a material that's gained from the soil um, and therefore that's something that still in Hamburg it's kept as a tradition and the other thing is about the heights Hamburg is not doesn't have high-rise buildings. Um, it has a certain level like this, uh, what we see here, these four to five stories, which is basically in the inner city, the limit for construction. There are only certain points where there are like single buildings that, that come out a, as a tower, but no building is allowed to be higher compared to the churches. So that's also something that is very much valued here in Hamburg, that we keep the scale, we keep the materiality, and that we work with this historic character, with also like this warehouse district, that we try to compose a city that it always seems like out of the existing, we are just continuing to develop the city. It's not like let's erase something and build a modern city on top of it. What are the pillars of a good urban renewal and good urban development? One of the pillars is to be place-based, to look at the place and to be clear about what does this place need. There is no recipe that will function in every place. And the second is always to look at is there a building substance that we can take, that we can refurbish or do we have to demolish it and erect something new? The statistic was uh, a building which was uh, a typically industrialized building uh, that was made of prefabricated parts in the GDR. And for some years it was n just empty and waiting to be demolished. But then a younger generation came and saw that there was a certain value within that building which represented uh, a political system which is not here anymore. So for this building there would have been obviously um, different scenarios, different options how to deal with it. Um, the most 
cheapest way uh, from an investment point of view, not taking into consideration uh, other costs that we need to factor in, like um, climate change and uh, environmental uh, impacts and so forth, you would demolish the building and you would divert everything to landfill. That would be the worst case scenario. The second option could have been that you d dismantle it in a better way, uh, you use techniques in order to maximize uh, materials that you could um, upgrade for recycling. And the last option is obviously to keep the building, to replace parts of it, to make also use out of the parts that you dismantle, like for instance the windows, they can either be reused or they could be properly recycled. This is obviously the best option. I think we have a rather broad definition of common good at Haus der Statistik and the first and uh, foremost definition is that we do not do the development of this project for profit but for the use of the citizens of Berlin. Then a second um, idea is that we try to have a self-organized space where the users have their say on how this project is developing and how it is going to be used. This house is like a bearer of um, histories and many people around here are attached to this building because it has always been here or because they have been working here back in the days. And so many people are very happy that this house is not going to be destroyed, but it is kept and also the memories attached to it. The site where the building is located is one of the most uh, expensive uh, sites in Berlin. And therefore it is important to show that not only uh, the big investments can uh, come to certain areas in the city, but also existing structures can be refurbished in order to have uh, a low uh, culture and a low cultural approach within the center of the economic development. If we have a heritage which is not so important, but they still have an influence on a neighborhood, for instance, so people identify within a neighborhood with uh, certain buildings or uh, a public space or whatever. So this is on a lower level as a national heritage, so to say. But we also have an everyday culture which is based in the housing areas and in the normal uh, neighborhoods of the city and this is actually very important for ecological and economic development because here the people behave in a specific way and uh, this behavior has to be changed if we want to bring them possibly in, in an ecological manner. Urban renewal is then best if you can't see it in the first sight because uh, then you did a renewal which is going to continue and which is used by the people and therefore you don't see the complete change but only if you understood and if you have seen the area before then you might see the changes. The Märkisches Viertel is quite a big uh, social housing estate where uh, 40,000 people live and of course there are about 13 to 15,000 units depending on how you count it. As you can imagine, in such a big housing estate, there is a lot of energy needed. We, it's a small town, you could say, and uh, therefore the political aim was uh, to radically reduce the energy consumption and therefore the CO2 footprint of the whole estate. And this is what they achieved and uh, this was actually also the first goal.
some of the special buildings are today monuments, especially the churches, but also we do have a technical monument, which is the power station for the whole estate. And this power station, it's also a symbolic uh, building because it changed from an oil burning plant and today it has become a timber wood burning plant which is using ecological uh, technology to achieve the goals they set up. Of course, they do also have other goals, which means that they are trying to maintain the environment here uh, in a very positive way and also um, establishing social and cultural uh, spots for these people who live here. They could design the cost in a way that what they save today in heating uh, it's the same that was used for the renovation. So for the people living here, the, their expenses did not change. And this housing estate actually shows that it is possible to transfer and transform such a big estate. And this can be done even if the people live in the building during the renovation. Merkelsviertel is an example that also a housing site from that area that are not in a central area of Berlin have a high value and uh, can be the basis of uh, cultural and social um, development also in our times. In order to come to a positive development, I think it is very important to find a strategy with the lowest possible investment, but the biggest outcome. So, I mean, this has to be discussed with all involved parties, and it always has to be a balanced discourse. In the past, we did have quite a few cases where economic development was the first point and in many cases the only point uh, to develop an area. But today we try to reorganize this discourse which is always not easy and it needs a lot of power from all sides in order to come to a balanced development which is desirable by all involved parties. Also aus Sicht der Baukultur ist jeder im System Beteiligte in seiner Rolle gefragt, auch als Entscheidungsträger. Das geht los beim Planer natürlich, beim Ingenieur, der Verantwortung trägt, massive Verantwortung für Festigkeit, Haltbarkeit, für Gestaltung. Das geht dann aber auch über das Handwerk, die auch viele Entscheidungen treffen zur Umsetzung dieser Idee. Und das betrifft in besonderer Weise auch die ähm, die Bauherrenschaft, die Immobilienwirtschaft, die letztlich die Systementscheidung trifft, ob und was gebaut wird. Und da braucht es mehr gesellschaftliche, auch unternehmensbezogene Verantwortung. Und an jeder Stelle dieser Kette ist man gefragt mit seiner Kompetenz, aber auch mit seiner Verantwortung. Kompetenz heißt immer Verantwortung gegenüber der Gesellschaft. We are quite aware that urban development is one of the decisive points for climate uh, sensibility in the development. So even the federal level decided we will mainstream climate protection in our urban renewal program and the lender and the cities agreed on it and we try it. It is really a big challenge to combine climate sensibility and social sensibility. I mean, if
if I would give an advice to policy makers, I would say that we need more discourse on the aims of a development and we have to involve many stakeholders, also the local population, because finally they are the ones who really run the place.